Matt, we'll go ahead and start off. Um, just, you know, you're two days out from your first competitive match. I think it'll be 128 days since the sporting game. So uh, how do you feel about the team going in your 48 hours from, from kickoff here? Well, yeah, first of all, we're very excited about having an opportunity to play. Obviously, it's been, it's been a long, long time. Uh, and even for the players who have played, you know, they, they had an opportunity to play two games. And before that, they hadn't played in months. Uh, so it's, it's really been a long time. I know that the players are anxious to get on the field. Uh, and we can't wait to get started. Great. All right, we'll go ahead and open up for questions. Uh, Jonathan Tannenwald, I'm going to go ahead and start with you and get you on. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hey, Tad, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. How's, how's the mood down there um, with the coaches and, and the players and, and the conversation about, you know, what Dallas and Nashville have gone through and now there's a case with Kansas City? Is there, is there worry among, among your group down there about any of that? I mean, is there worry? You always worry a little bit, of course. Uh, but I think, you know, we, we feel safe. Uh, we feel like uh, we're in a good spot. You know, our medical group has done an amazing job. Uh, to keep us safe. I think it's safe. I think the players have also done an amazing job in terms of staying away from where they shouldn't be and, and being as professional as they can to sort of protect each other and, and our families because we know we owe each other. We all owe to each other. And, uh, and they've done a great job with that. So we're, we're very happy uh, with where we are and, and how we're doing things. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, David Nuno, we'll go to you next. Hey, Tab, um, obviously success in this tournament will determine how much fun you guys have, but as a team building, as a growing of chemistry, how, how is this experience working out for you, for your guys? I mean, there, there's, there's been a lot over the last uh, three, four months in terms of developing team chemistry. So, you know, obviously we're doing it more on the field now. We had an opportunity to do it off the field through Zoom and through team uh, meetings and, and that type of thing. So now we're finally getting on the field. We're we're very excited about it, and, and now it's just time to, to start playing. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, we'll go next to Michael McCall. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, hi, Tab. People are they're talking about this tournament. They're saying it's like a World Cup-style tournament. So using that analogy, I guess you guys are, are in the group of death. It's like one of the hardest groups that there is in this opening round of matches. How is a team going to be able to jump into such tough competitive games right away with not having played for, for four months? We've seen it so far. It's been a little bit patchy at times. Do you feel your guys can just flick that switch and get ready to go right away? We're going to do the best we can to do that. I mean, obviously we're, we're preparing as much as we can uh, to do that. And I'm sure the other teams have as well. Uh, of course, you can see in some of the matches that the timing is off a little bit on, on for everyone, but I think that's normal and, and to be expected to a certain extent. Obviously, we hope that on Monday the game goes perfect for us. That's, that's what we work towards, but, but I know it's been a long time since we played. You know, and In terms of being in the group of death, I think, I think this is a good scenario for us. I think that's, this, is, this is just what we need. We need to get te tested for me as a new coach. It's important for me to see, you know, what, what the best teams are doing and how they play and, and where we are and, and how far we need to go if, if it's that far at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be in this group and to be playing great teams. Thanks, Michael. Uh, next, we're going to go to Mark Berman. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Mark, go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I can hear. Okay. Hey, a, a, a couple of questions. One, how have, how have you, have y'all had any issues at all during this time with the COVID-19 and how have y'all done such a great job given what's going on around you? And the, the other question beyond that is how does it change the dynamic with uh, the two teams that no longer in the tournament? Well, first, I think, you know, our, our, our group has done, as I said before, our, our medical group from even when we were in Houston, obviously Houston being one of the hot st spots in, in the country now, um, you know, all the players in, in the medical group and the protocols that we had, not only from MLS, but internally have put us in a, in a very safe position to be able to do all the things that we've done. So we feel very good about everything that's happened so far. In terms of, you know, the, the two teams that left, 
uh, in the tournament changing. Obviously, as you know, nothing changed in our group. Our group is still the same. And if anything, it's made the tournament a little bit more even because the groups work out better now. Uh, and so we just have to move on. Obviously, we, we don't feel good about two teams not being here. We wish that they could be here. I'm sure they try to do the best they can to participate as well. But I think uh, this was a good decision uh, by the league at, at this time. Okay, Mark, I see you're still open. Did you have a follow-up or is that it? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, we'll go next to Joe Gleason. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Tab, can you just talk a little bit about just how excited you are just to get back on the field, see the team play and all that, just the excitement of just playing again? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really – it's hard to explain, actually, because that you feel after three months of being on Zoom and on, on Microsoft Teams – uh, you feel like you don't know if you're coaching a, a chess team or if you're actually coaching a real team that actually comes out on the field and does something. So I, I'm very excited to be on the field as a coach. Uh, and I know that if I'm excited, I'm, I'm sure the players are dying to get on the field on Monday. Thanks, Joe. Uh, next up, we'll go to Daniel Gutierrez. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Tab. Hey, Tab um, I guess two questions. One, what did you learn from your group in those games that you did play? on the field. What could you take away from what you guys were able to put out there on the field? And the second question would be, have you been paying attention to the dash a little bit and what they've been doing? I know your, your plate is full, but they've been playing pretty good out there in Utah as well. Yeah, no. So let me, uh, let me start with the second question first. So obviously with the dash, you know, you know, James and I are developing a good, good relationship as being part of the club and as all of us being inclusive with each other. Um, you know, I follow their games. I know they're going into the last game in the group and they're one, one and one and, and they've been an exciting team to watch. So I'm really looking forward to them uh, in, the, in the next round and wish them from here, not just myself, but our full team is wishing them the best of luck going into the, uh, uh, the next round. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the team uh, and what was your question? I'm sorry. Just what did you take away from those for the, the oh. matches that you did play that you did see this team in action? Yeah. So, so, I mean, there's so much because, you know, obviously over, unfortunately over the last four months, there's only two games that we could analyze for four months. So we, we, uh, we looked at those games so much and, you know, obviously in, in Kansas city, we started strong. We, we pressed them well. Uh, and then a couple of long balls, the game got opened up and then and then we were chasing the game the rest of the time. Overall, I was happy with the team in terms of the attitude to come out and go after a result. Uh, but I know that we have to improve. Uh, we have to improve on the transition side of the ball. So a trans a transition from attacking to defending uh, has been an issue for us in the first two games. And then I thought in the, you know, in the Galaxy game, and we talked about this with the team as well, we had we had a lot of the ball. We had a lot of possession in the first game but yet we didn't create that many opportunities. Uh, and so we've been working on that as well. Uh, and so hopefully, obviously on Monday, we start to see some of the things that, that we'd like to see done a little bit better. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, we'll next go to Daniel or to David Nuno. Uh, go ahead, David. Yeah, obviously, uh, LAFC is a very strong team, but how does not having Carlos Vila change the way you attack them and, and how they play? Oh, there's no question, you know, when you're missing the, 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 the best player in the league, it, it does make a difference. You know, LAFC is one of those clubs that, unfortunately for us, obviously they have a great roster from top to bottom, uh, and they can replace them with, an, with another great player. But having, said, but having said that, obviously, you know, not seeing Vela there changes the game a little bit because, you know, obviously he's so dangerous up front. Uh, you know, we, we will stick to, you know, to doing pretty much what we do, which is we're going to try to be aggressive from the beginning and, and focus on our team and, and uh, just looking, looking forward to playing what's likely the best team in the league. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, we'll go back to Jonathan Tannenwald here. Uh, go ahead. A sec. Todd, um, this tournament and the nature of it with games coming so often, means that everybody, almost everybody on the team is probably going to get a run at some point. And we've seen that, you know, with other teams already in this thing. How, you know, how important is that for the young players on, on your team and other teams? And how much of an opportunity is it for them? And obviously, with all the hats you've worn over the years, I know that's a subject that you care quite a bit about. So, Yeah, I, mean, I feel like we're, we're in a good place. We've been pre preparing all, you know, 27 players that we have available here. So... I think that from a fitness standpoint, they're at the best place they could possibly be. And that's all 27 of them. It's not just, 
you know, whatever the starting 11 is going to be on Monday. So we feel good about that part. And obviously, uh, hopefully a lot of the players will get an opportunity to show themselves. Thanks, Jonathan. It uh, looks like we've got one more question in English. So I'll make one more call. If you have any additional questions in English, go ahead and raise your hand now. Otherwise, we'll switch to Spanish here in just a second. Uh, we'll go back to Michael McCall. Uh, Michael. Hey, Cap. Tab, you've been away at tournaments before as both a player, as a coach. I know this is very different in that you can't go outside and do normal things like if you were away at the World Cup or whatever. But mentally, how are you using your, previously ex your previous experiences to kind of help the players get through this? Because it's going to be tough for them. It is difficult, and this is different than anything else I've lived before. Um, the only thing that's sort of the same is the format of the tournament. And I do realize how important for a team like us it will be to start uh, the tournament, you know, on, on the right foot and playing well and, and starting to develop more and more confidence. Um, you know, I've, I think we've given the player a lot of the players a lot of confidence. I think, I think we're going to be ready to go, and I think it's important for us to start even though we are playing likely the best team in the league, I think it's important for us to, to start strong. Thanks, Michael. And it uh, looks like one last question in English here from Justin Finger. Uh, so if you have questions in Spanish, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll, get to, we'll transition to Spanish after this. Justin, go ahead and your three go. Uh, hey, Tab. So after watching the first, you know, first couple matches of this tournament, how does the team overcome the, the rust that's in the first half? Uh, it seems like it's been an ongoing issue. Not, maybe not necessarily an issue, but an ongoing thing in the first couple of matches. Well, I think, you know, no matter how much you prepare, uh, you can have months to prepare and or you can have little time to prepare. Nothing prepares you like playing actual competitive games. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that at all. And I think you can see that with all the teams. Uh, it's not, you know, at, at, at the very least, normally before you go into a competition, you'll have three, four, five, at the very least scrimmage games against other teams. Um, no team has been able to do that. And so it's inevitable that all the teams are going to be rusty and in particular more rusty, obviously in the first half. Um, we're going to try to avoid that as much as we can. I'm sure LAFC will try to do the same, uh, but there's no question that, that all the teams, at least at the beginning of the tournament will not be firing on all cylinders. Justin, Ted, thank you for that. We're going to switch over to Spanish. Vamos a cambiar a español. Empezamos con Edson Ochoa. Basado en su evaluación de, de la plantilla, de la condición física de la plantilla, eh, ¿va a tener que a, hacer cier, ciertos cambios a, a, a sus tácticas en base a, a la condición física o piensa que que ellos están listos para jugar el mismo estilo desde de los primeros dos partidos. No, bueno, es posible que porque eh, la temperatura es tan alta y porque el equipo no ha jugado partidos competitivos, es posible que, que el equipo tiene que tomar eh, con precaución eh, el jugar siempre hacia arriba, el presionar eh, 90 minutos, o sea, ese tipo de cosas creo que va a ser difícil. Eh, pero nos tenemos que ir adaptando de a poco, hay que empezar de a poco y, y ojalá el equipo eh, vaya creciendo. Okay. Uh, Victor Ariza. Eh, saludos, Tab. Eh, ¿Cómo ha trabajado su, su cuerpo técnico para encontrar un, un balance mental? Eh, obviamente en tratar de mantener sal la salud, pero también eh, competir en ese torneo de MLS Impact. Sí, la, la verdad que no, no ha sido fácil, ¿no? Porque eh, mucho tiempo estando fuera, aparte uno tiene que considerar las preocupaciones de todos los jugadores que tienen en cuanto a sus familias, ¿no? Porque estamos aquí, estamos todos seguros, nos sentimos bastante bien, eh, pero en general eh, todos los jugadores están con sus familias en casa, ¿no? Entonces eh, existe esa preocupación. Nosotros tratamos de hablar, eh, no solo yo, sino todo el cuerpo técnico, Intentamos hablar lo más posible con los jugadores, eh, mantenerlos alegres, mantenerlos enfocados en lo que estamos haciendo, pero al mismo tiempo sabemos que el club ha hecho un gran trabajo dejando una persona que dejamos en Houston ahora, eh, que está solamente encargada de recibir llamadas de, de las familias de los jugadores eh, para que los jugadores estén más tranquilos. Gracias, Víctor. Entonces, vamos a Luis Ortiz. Eh, ¿Qué tal, profe? Buenas tardes. Este, 
Eh, solamente eh, queriendo su punto de vista de cómo ve al equipo ya a dos días de debutar en el torneo, este, cómo ha sido la preparación y en qué forma se sienten que están en este, en este momento. Sí, la verdad que el, al equipo lo veo muy ansioso, con muchísimas ganas de jugar. Eh, ahora que quedan dos días nada más, hay que recordar que, que pasamos tanto tiempo entre entrenar en cuarto, a cuarto de campo individualmente, a grupos pequeños, después a entrenar todos juntos y ahora por primera vez a tener un partido. Así que me imagino los jugadores están súper contentos de, de, que, de que venga la hora del partido y, y bueno, y estoy seguro que van a rendir al máximo. Gracias Luis. Uh, entonces vamos a, a Edson. Tab, eh, en, los, en las uh, semanas pasadas se, se, uh, se habló de, del fichaje de Nico Lemoyne uh, de RGBSC. También recientemente uh, se firmó a, a varios jugadores de la academia. Uh, ¿cuál, ha, ¿Cuál ha sido eh, su, su proceso para adaptarse al, al primer equipo? ¿Cuál su evaluación en su adaptación? Sí, bueno, la verdad que eh, primero que todo sabemos que en la academia, la academia de Houston Dynamo tenemos jugadores, jugadores muy buenos, jugadores que se merecen oportunidad y jugadores que creo que van a ayudar a un futuro al primer equipo. Eh, en el caso de Nico, es un jugador que creo que estaba preparado para dar el salto al primer equipo. Por supuesto, por supuesto que él necesita oportunidad, que necesita tiempo. Eh, por supuesto que cuando él tenga la oportunidad de jugar... Eh, que hay que saber que va a cometer errores todavía y que va a ir mejorando de a poco eh, pero nosotros estamos preparados porque creo que es un jugador que tiene muchas cualidades importantes y creo que va a ser un jugador muy muy importante para, la, para el futuro de Houston Dynamo Gracias Edson uh, Luis eh, Profe, ahora tocando este, el tema del coronavirus este, uno de los colegas le preguntaba en inglés ¿Cómo está el ambiente allá dentro del equipo tal vez también alrededor de toda la liga, ya que, bueno, ya van dos equipos que se retiran de este torneo y también hasta en otras ligas. Eh, MLB anuncia que tiene 66 casos, hoy los Astros cancelan su práctica. ¿Cómo, qué, cómo está ya todo el ambiente alrededor de este tema del coronavirus? Sí, en general creo que es normal que, que todos los equipos tengan un poquito de preocupación, eh, pero creo que nosotros vemos a nuestro grupo tranquilo, eh, creemos uno, uno al otro, creo que venimos hablando de que somos una familia de principio y, y que nos necesitamos unos al otro eh, y que todos dependemos de, la, de, lo, de, de las cosas que cada cual haga, de todo el equipo y nos sentimos bastante bien que el equipo se ha mantenido, eh, ha mantenido, se ha mantenido en los protocolos que, que hay que seguir y, y bueno, seguros y, y esperando el partido del lunes. Gracias Luis. Uh, Victor. una de las ciudades más eh, pegadas, golpeadas eh, por el COVID y aún así su equipo ha salido sin, con cero contagios. Eh, ¿Nos puede hablar un poco de las medidas que ha tomado el equipo eh, para man, mantenerse saludables ante esta pandemia? Sí, creo que lo que tengo que hacer es agradecer al cuerpo médico del club eh, porque a pesar de que todos los, todos los clubes tenemos que seguir el protocolo de MLS, eh, también hay que reconocer que, que seguimos nuestros protocolos que eh, que bueno, que son importantísimos para el club y creo que tenemos un cuerpo médico fabuloso que nos ha mantenido eh, lo más seguro posible. Okay. Gracias, Victor. Uh, as a reminder, guys, and I'm going to say this in English because my Spanish isn't strong enough, but please uh, click the raise your hand button if you have questions. I, I see a couple in chat. So, Enrique, I'm going to come to you. Uh, Enrique Gonzalez, go ahead. ¿Qué tal, Tab? ¿Cómo está? Le mando un saludo. Pues la pregunta es esta, ¿no? Eh, dos equipos ya quedaron fuera con todas las precauciones eh, que se tenían que hacer en la MLS. ¿Surge algo de nerviosismo ante esto? ¿Y cómo mantener la concentración de los jugadores para ponerse a pensar en cancha y no estar pensando, por supuesto, en familias, que lo hemos visto eh, por, como cualquier trabajo? Estás preocupada a ver cómo está tu familia. Y también preocuparte por no contagiarte al ver ya antecedente de dos equipos. ¿Cómo se maneja esto, profe? Sí, bueno, como, como decía anteriormente, lo, lo importante es que todos creemos en todos, que somos un equipo, que sabemos que venimos eh, de Texas, en un sitio donde hay mucho contagio, pero aquí eh, llegamos con 45 personas sin ningún tipo de problema, sin ningún contagio, o sea que si seguimos cre eh, creciendo en, en, en nosotros mismos, eh, 
posiblemente seguiremos así, o sea, puede igual puede surgir algún caso, pero en general eh, es normal que los jugadores se preocupen de sus familias y, o sea, no nosotros queremos que los jugadores piensen en sus familias y, y el club ha hecho un gran trabajo dejando una persona que está específicamente en Houston en este momento eh, recibiendo llamadas de familia con cualquier cosa que necesiten para tener a los jugadores aquí lo, lo más tranquilo posible. Gracias, Enrique. Uh, Andrés Inzunza. Sí. Eh, TAP. Eh, el lunes se enfrentan, a, a, obviamente, al LAFC sin Carlos Vela, que es un motor muy importante para, para el equipo. ¿Será igual, eh, será más, más fácil superar al equipo de LAFC sin Carlos Vela o era por igual estando o no estando Carlos Vela? No, o sea, eh, Carlos es uno de los mejores, si no el mejor jugador de la liga. O sea que, por supuesto, que siempre él va a marcar una diferencia, ¿no? Habiendo dicho esto, el equipo de Los Ángeles es un equipo que tiene un plantel muy compensado, que tienen otros jugadores que pueden poner, que pueden marcar la diferencia también y que va a ser un, un partido muy, muy difícil para nosotros. O sea, eh, de cualquier forma, nosotros tomamos este partido como si estuviera Carlos Vela. Okay. Enrique. Eh, profe, hemos visto en las ligas del mundo la falta de público. El público, sin duda alguna, es un cambio muy importante para cualquier equipo, cómo se desenvuelve. ¿Cómo, cómo, qué, ¿Qué es lo que ha tenido usted de, de, se llama en inglés el feedback, o qué le han dicho otros entrenadores o jugadores, de jugar sin público en estos estadios? Sí, bueno, eso lo veo, lo veo un poquito diferente, ¿no? Porque, claro, cuando uno mira las ligas de otros países y ve que no hay, eh, que no hay público... Siempre se extraña el público, ¿no? Porque al final creo que los jugadores cuando entran al campo quieren jugar para su público, quieren jugar para su, su afición y sus aficionados. Eso es lo que emociona al jugador. Pero creo que este es momento de recordar de que todos venimos de jugar muchísimos partidos sin público. O sea, todos crecimos jugando al fútbol sin público prácticamente, solo la familia en los partidos. O sea que es hora de mirar y de jugar al fútbol porque porque uno disfruta del fútbol y porque a uno le gusta el fútbol y creo que los jugadores lo, lo están mirando de esa manera. Okay. Uh, gracias, Enrique. Y última pregunta de Andrés Insunza. Eh, eh, Tab, ya tienes más o menos vista la alineación para el, para el lunes. ¿Cómo va a enfrentar el equipo, eh, el equipo del Dynamo al el, el AFC? Sí, por supuesto. O sea, nosotros estamos eh, seguramente un par de dudas en cuanto al equipo titular, pero pero en general sabemos bastante bien lo que queremos hacer. Disculpe, Tab, este, una preguntita de último momento. Eh, estaba viendo que Albert Ellis ya está listo para regresar. Si nos puede actualizar cómo está y, y este, cómo lo ve, ¿ya jugará el lunes o qué tan pronto espera que regrese ya a jugar? Sí, bueno, eh, es un caso importante para nosotros, obviamente, porque Albert es un jugador que puede marcar la diferencia. Eh, obviamente, él se perdió los primeros dos partidos de liga, o sea que hay que recordar que Albert no juega partido desde noviembre. Entonces, para él se le va a ser sumamente difícil. Esperemos que, que de cualquier manera nos pueda dar minutos y que a, a medida que pase el torneo eh, vaya creciendo y dándonos más y más. Muchas gracias. Uh, I think that will wrap us up. Thank you all for, for taking some time this afternoon. Tab, thank you. Uh, good luck thank in you the guys. match on, uh, on Monday, and we'll talk to you after the game.